Hello everyone, welcome back. Topic for today is cleft lip and cleft palate. So, cleft lip and cleft palate, it is a most common congenital anomaly which is affecting the humans in the craniofacial region. Cleft palate, it can be defined as it is a breach in the continuity of the palate. So, the break in the continuity of the palate is known as cleft palate. They are also associated with like around 300 recognized syndromes. So, cleft palate and cleft lip you can find in around 300 syndromes. They are present like the incidence of cleft lip and cleft palate. They are approximately present 1 in 600 to 800 life birth. It is like around 1.42 in 1000 and isolated cleft palate it occurs approximately 1 in 2000 life births. So the typical distribution of the cleft type is cleft lip alone you will see 15% then cleft lip and palate both you will see around 45% and cleft palate which is isolated cleft palate you will see around 40%. So cleft of the lip it occurs mostly in males and cleft palate you will see is more common in females. So cleft lip it is most in males it is mostly common in males and cleft palate is in females. Then in addition left sided cleft lip they are more common than the right sided and this can be asked as a MCQ or even they can ask you as like in a viva. So from this video what I am going to do is I am going to tell about the viva questions from this particular topic so that you are also prepared for your viva also for the practical exams. So this cleft palate and cleft lip so in this this is like a very commonly asked MCQ which sided cleft lip you will find more left sided right sided they will give you options so you have to select left sided then unilateral they are more common than bilateral clefts and you have to remember this also so among the unilateral clefts clefts which is involving the left side it is seen around 70 percent so this is nothing but the cleft lip and this is cleft palate now going towards the embryological background so the formation of lip is there are these prominences so there are this unpaired frontonasal prominence medial and lateral nasal prominence then two maxillary prominence and two mandibular prominence and if there is incomplete fusion or if there is failure of fusion between the frontonasal and the maxillary it will lead to cleft lip so now in this diagram you can see this diagram so this a it is a frontonasal process and this b it is the two palatal shelf of the maxillary process so if there is failure of fusion between this then it can lead to cleft lip then moving towards the development of palate so palate it has two parts that is primary palate and secondary palate so this is the primary palate and this one is the secondary palate so primary palate the triangular part of the hard palate which is anterior to the incisive foramen it is known as primary palate or premaxilla that is the frontonasal prominence so it is formed through this frontonasal prominence and it develops in the fourth and eighth week of gestation and secondary palate the remaining part of the hard palate and all the soft palate which is posterior to the incisive foramen which comes from the palatine shelves of the maxillary prominence and it develops between the eighth and the twelfth weeks so this is just in very short the embryological background how your cleft lip and cleft palate it forms so to know about it you should first know about the embryology how exactly the lips and the palate they form so this is the diagram this is the front nasal process this is the, uh, these are the two maxillary process so over here as you can see this forms your pre maxilla and then there is fusion of this two maxillary processes and it forms this hard palate so this is the soft palate and over here as you can see this is the alveolar bone this is the palate and this is the lip so this is the formation in very short so moving on towards the etiological factor so there are two factors genetic and environmental in genetic you'll see there are monogenic or single gene disorder or there are polygenic or multifactorial inheritance and there can be chromosomal abnormality so chromosomal abnormality it usually accounts 18 percent of the clefting syndrome and you can see it with down syndrome edward syndrome and clefting syndrome they are three times more frequent in down syndrome so this is the chromosomal abnormality now what are the environmental factors so first is the environmental teratogens so the term teratogen it is nothing but the 
environmental agent that causes the congenital malformations and this is nothing but the teratogens so teratogenic drugs can be there can be morphine if there is morphine overdose then if alcohol is consumed during the if alcohol consumption is there during the first trimester it can lead to fetal alcohol syndrome then if there is maternal cigarette smoking all these are the factors which can cause problems congenitally then there is malnutrition in that you will see if there is folic acid deficiency it is considered as a universal teratogen which is affecting every organ and system in the body so if there is folic acid deficiency then it will lead to cleft palate the next is the infectious disease which is seen during pregnancy and the fourth one is the parental age so in parental age you will see if the woman is about 35 years they had they have a double risk of having a child with a cleft lip and palate and if the women is about 39 years then there is a triple risk of having the child with cleft palate and it infectious if there are any infectious diseases which is present during pregnancy so there is an association of the cleft birth with fever and influenza when it is related to the virus causative organisms now all are this the classifications of cleft lip and cleft palate so there are many classifications which were given but in this like you should know only some of them if you like get a question on cleft lip and cleft palate then you have to start your answer as an introduction to it then you have to write in one line the incidence then you can write about in very short the embryological background and then you can like then you have to write about the etiological factor and then comes the classification because usually cleft lip and cleft palate it is asked as a laq that is your long answer question and in long answer question the management part of your cleft lip and cleft palate it holds the maximum marks so for classification you can write three or four classification which are which all classification you are well thorough with it's not like you have to write all of them or it's not like particular you have to write these or this so you can write any of them Three or four, you can learn maximum maximum five of them, and then you can write in your exam. Starting off with the first one, that is the Davis and Ritchie's classification. So it is classified on its position in relation to the alveolar process. So first is group one, group two, and group C. So group one, it is a pre-alveolar cleft in which it only involves the lip. So this is the diagram. These are the lips. This is the hard palate. This is soft palate. So in this group one, you will see there are three subgroups. That is unilateral. median and bilateral so if there is cleft lip unilaterally so this is the group 1 subgroup a this is bilateral and this is the median now group 2 is it is post alveolar cleft it involves the soft palate only or it involves the cleft of the hard and the soft palate that extends up to the alveolar ridge submucous cleft are also included so this is the cleft of the hard palate and this is the cleft of the soft palate then there are the third group that is the alveolar cleft in which you will see complete cleft of the palate alveolar ridge and the lip so again it is divided into unilateral bilateral and median so these all are the classifications so these are the groups which are given by davis and ritchie in 1922 the next is the wiers classification it was given in 1931 so it is divided into four subgroups so four groups so first is cleft of the soft palate so it is cleft of the soft palate first is you are starting from the posterior region so it is cleft of the soft palate second is cleft of the hard and the soft palate so it is hard and the soft palate which is no further than the incisive foramen so it is not crossing the incisive foramen the group 3 is it is a complete unilateral cleft of the hard and the soft palate lip and the alveolar ridge so this is the cleft which is crossing the incisive foramen and it is the cleft of the lip alveolar ridge and hard and the soft palate but it is unilateral and group 4 group 5 is complete bilateral cleft of soft hard palate lip and alveolar ridges so this is bilaterally so first is the soft palate then soft and hard palate then whole of it but it is unilaterally and then it is bilaterally so this is this classification is basically very easy to learn and you can even draw this diagram in your exam so you can consider this wiers classification as one of the classification that you have to write in your exams next is fox and fox edrinson he gave this classification in 1942 then he classified it into three groups group a sorry group 1 2 and 3 in one there is cleft of lip group b is group 2 is cleft of lip and palate and third one is the cleft of palate which is extending up to the incisive foramen 
again they are divided subdivided single and double that is unilateral or bilateral and again it is lip the lip and the palate it is divided again into single and double so this is also a simple one which you can write and you can learn easily now this is the next classification which was given by Krukat and Pfeiffer which is a symbolic classification so this was the first diagrammatic classification of the cleft lip and the palate so it makes the use of a diagram with vertical blocks of three pairs of the rectangle and it has an inverted triangle at the bottom so this diagram so it is a symbolic classification now this also you can like draw in your exams because way too simple to draw and you just have to write whatever it is so there are this left side and right side soft palette as you know it can be only one it is not left or right so soft palette is drawn in this uni in this inverted triangle so you have to write your soft palette in the uni in this inverted triangle then over here this is the lip left and right side this is the alveolus left and right side and the hard palate so the each vertical pair it represents left and right side separately and the inverted triangle it represents the soft palate while the rectangle it represents the lip alveolus and the hard palate so the areas which are affected by the cleft they are shaded on the chart so whichever the area is affected it is shaded on that chart and partial cleft and total cleft they are shaded in different color so you have to give this coding so for example if there is a partial cleft which is present so you have to color them with different colors on this symbolic classification and this is very simple so the next classification was given by kernahan and it is known as kernahan's strip y classification which was given in 1971 so again this is a symbolic classification and in this classification now you are considering the incisive foramen as a reference point and it has this logo of y so this logo of y it is divided into three section so it is divided so in front of this incisive papilla or incisive foramen it is divided into three parts that is the lips alveolus and the hard palate which is anterior to the incisive foramen and beyond this on this straight part of your y it is divided into three parts that is the hard palate and the soft palate so it represents varying degree of the clefting of the hard and the soft palate so the classification it uses a stripped y which is having numbered block to represent a specific area so over here as you can see this one so the way you are writing 1 2 3 4 is you are writing first on this y the upper part of your y you are writing it from 1 to 6 and then you are writing the 7 8 9 on this straight part of your y so 1 2 3 then you are writing 4 from the upside 4 5 and 6 so 1 and 4 it is the lip then 2 and 5 it is the alveolus then 3 and 6 it is the hard palate which is anterior to the incisive foramen and over here 7 and 8 it is hard palate which is posterior to the incisive foramen and this 9 is the soft palate so this boxes they are shaded in the area where the cleft is passed is present so this is nothing but a kernahan strip y classification now the next is the millard's classification so this is nothing but the modification of kernahan strip y classification so what millard did was he just added two triangles which is inverted over one another so it represents the nose and the nasal floor so over here 1 and 5 so over here what you are doing is you are adding two more numbers so in that classification that was the kernahan you have seen it was 1 to 9 but over here it is 1 to 11 because you are adding two more like additional things that are the nasal floor so you are writing the numbers from 1 to 1 2 3 4 then 5 6 7 8 so it comes on the upper part of your y and the 9 10 11 it is on the lower part of your y so 1 and 5 it becomes the nasal floor 2 and 6 is the lips 3 and 7 is the alveolus then 4 and 8 is the hard palate it is anterior to the incisive foramen so this is your incisive foramen then 9 10 is hard palate again which is posterior to the incisive foramen and 11 is the soft palate again you have to just shade it like whichever area of the cleft is present you just have to shade it on this symbolic diagram the next is the lachal classification so this classification it was presented by okrens in 1987 so the term lachal it is a anatomic paraphrase of so lachal is nothing but lip alveolus soft palate hard palate alveolus and lip so this is nothing but a paraphrase of it so this classification is based on the fact that the cleft of the lip alveolus and hard palate they occur bilaterally so as you know this cleft of your lips alveolus and hard palate they are occur bilaterally and soft palate is unilaterally and hence you will have only s once in this classification 
then the areas which are involved in the cleft they are denoted by specifically indicating the alphabet which is stand, which is standing for it so l is for the over here if you are writing it l from the right side then l is for the lips h a is for alveolus then h is for hard palate s is for soft palate then again hard palate alveolus and lips so for example now i'll show you if it is written as l a h so if it is written as l a h so it means that it is right sided so it is right sided but if it is written h a l so it is left sided l a h is right and h a l is the left sided so the areas which are involved in the cleft they are denoted by the specific alphabet for example now if i am writing l a h so it stands for the cleft of the lip alveolus and the hard palate on the right side and if i am writing h a l so it means it is the cleft of the hard palate alveolus and lips on the left side so this is nothing but the lachal's classification the next classification is the nagpur classification the nagpur classification it was advocated by the balakrishnan in one of the classification it is followed by many in india so it is divided into three groups group 1 2 and 3 one is cleft of lip two is cleft of palate only and three is cleft of lip and palate so this is the like very easy classification to learn and even to write in your exam so what you can do is you can write so you can draw any two of the symbolic classification you can write this nagpur classification and you can write use classification so it's on you you have to write only around so it depends on the marks and the classification they usually have two to three marks in your exams so you have to write almost like three or you can write max to max five classification if you have time in your exams and this was all about one of the cleft lip and palate now in my second part of this i'm going to explain about the problem problems which are associated with the cleft and the management of it and this is like the most important part of your cleft lip and palate that is the management and your management it is divided into like stages depending upon the age so all about that what you have to write in your exams i'm going to tell you in my next video for this cleft lip and palate thank you so much